just want to thank you all sincerely for coming out and being a part of this event. I've been doing comedy almost 10 years, and this is a moment where I'm really going all in on myself and trying to create an opportunity that inspires others to do the same. So this is how comedy specials go. Most comics do like four recordings of their comedy specials. Joel's doing it in one, and it looks like a half right now. <laughs> I gotta admit, I am a trophy husband. I will admit it. Yeah, it's a participation trophy. But, but I married the perfect wife. She has a tattoo, so she can handle permanent mistakes. She brought the dog, of course. We're leaving aside. Look at him petting him. Look at him. So, so jealous. People ask me, like, when I'm having kids, I'm like, I don't want kids. Not till I have unlimited data. <laughs> it's also kind of scary to have a kid right now because you, I don't know if the world is ending or not. I hear the sea levels are rising, but then I hear half of America's obese. So, I don't know if the seas are rising or if we're just <laughs> sinking. <laughs> so I wanna end my special uh, on a joke my wife told me not to do. Hey, let's, let's do this. Hey, hey there. Hey, y'all. Hey, honey. whoa, how, look at this. Welcome to the uh, Uniweb interview show. Uh, this is the comics pursuing plant based. Vegetation uh, between two bros. Yeah, hey, between two bros. Between two bros. We out of here, honey. Trophy husband promo tour. Matt Whiteside. Between yeah. two bros. Just trying to be fine. Hey, that's a picture sorry, of that's, my junk. That was. Whoa. Sorry. Hey, that's. <laughs> Hot breath. All right. I'm so sorry. No, it's good. Hey, the excitement is palpable. I, uh, if I had a knife. I could cut it. Yeah? Yeah, I Fair. don't. But they don't let me carry sharp objects anymore. That's for the best. It's for the best. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Dude. I'm glad to be back. It's uh, It's been a while. It has. You have been on a success whirlwind tour <laughs> of epic proportions, sort of like a tornado attached uh -huh. to a hurricane, riding a bull. Whoa. Whoa. I'll take that. That's kind of too much. I appreciate it. <laughs> we seem to be wearing the same shirt as well. That was... Yeah, I don't know. Um, totally unplanned, actually. It was unplanned. I actually wear it every day. <laughs> it's a <laughs> shirt. Hasn't been washed in months. <laughs> I bought it. I bought this at the actual uh, the special. At the taping. At the taping, man. I, th I appreciate you. You have been so supportive of the Joeliverse and the Hot Breathiverse, and it it means so much to me, and it really does make a difference. So well, thank man, you, it's, Matt. What you do is you share your knowledge, your wisdom what you've learned with other people. You support mm -hmm. other people. And that is a uh, quality you don't see in a lot of people. And it's something to get behind, you know? Wow, okay. I mean, somebody who is out there working their tail off, not just for themselves, but also to be able to share their experience. Yeah. That's a gift, man. That's been my goal with this special, too, is, like, I understand the hustle of, like, a comedian. You know, yeah. I'm... You're, how long have you been doing it now? Over four months. Over four months. So it's like I'm I'm coming up on ten years, and and I understand the frustration of being at an open mic till one a.m. Yeah. or the host saying I got you next, and then two hours later they're like, oh I forgot <laughs> I got you next week, you know, yeah. I, or the frustration you see the cool show with the faces on the flyer, and you're like one day, and you never like I understand like all that, so I know what you're going through right now, and that's why with this special I wanted to kind of document the process of a comedian seeing all these other comedians with a special. Okay, how can I do it myself and create yeah. my own success and just kind of document the whole process? Yeah, and let's talk about that process a little bit because it is a major undertaking for. Anyone who's watched the comedy special, I mean, there's thousands of them on Netflix now, mm -hmm. and they think it's just this, you know, guy shows up and is funny as hell for an hour. But there's years and years behind not just the material, mm -hmm. but the planning of what you're going to do, where it's going to be set, the setting of the place, the people who are filming it, like everything that goes into the special is 
is an immense undertaking. And it all just kind of fell into place in a sense of it just being a little serendipitous that I filmed it at Basement Theater, which yeah. is the first place that ever booked me to headline a show. Wow. So I record my first special there. The guy that directs it, Isaac Stackhouse, he's actually a fan and he listens to the podcast. And I came on his podcast and we were talking about a comedy special and if I was doing one or not. And I yeah. was like, it'd be nice. And then afterwards, he's like, you know, I have a production company that <laughs> could like, do that. Yeah. So it all just kind of fell into place where this the perfect storm of like place, location, resources, people. I was like, I don't know who would film this. And boom, Isaac appears. And it's been just every step of the way. It's been work and it's been a learning experience. But we've documented all of it. So I'm excited for people to see just like what goes into it. Well, I think the important thing too about being able to document all that is there are so many serendipitous moments, so many synchron synchronicitical synchronicitals. Yeah, we'll have to Google that. That's one. a good. I <laughs> just invented a word. <laughs> <laughs> Synchronicities. Yeah. I think that's the right way to say it. Synchronicities that happen mm -hmm. simply by you taking action, stepping out on faith or whatever it is, just deciding to make something happen, and these people just kind of like boom, boom opportunity starts presenting itself yeah that is, that has been an interesting point and experience with this because this was it's kind of like it goes it kind of stems back to when i first started to do comedy and then i was like okay i'm gonna go full-time into comedy and then all these opportunities started to show themselves and then yeah. i realized okay i want to do this special and then all these opportunities started to kind of align so it is it seems to be that the hardest step is almost like the first step of starting yeah. and then just being consistent with that step will kind of start to bring people in your orbit. It's been very inspiring. Well, let's talk about the consistency of it, mm -hmm. right? Because 10 years, so four months of me doing this, I wanted to uh, curl up into a little ball. Um, I've already have a great shape for, uh, <laughs> for that, but uh, <laughs> and just roll away into a hole. Joel, <laughs> you you have stayed consistent and been doing it consecutively for 10 years. Yeah. Where does that inner drive come from? I Or is it drugs? Is, are the drugs involved? It's drugs. <laughs> but that's what's crazy. <laughs> is like, yeah, when the drugs Sometimes stopped is when the productivity started. Oh, so yes. it's, it's kind of like Whoa. an inverse for some people. It's true. Because some people, they do the opposite in comedy. They yeah. start comedy and then drugs. But I quit drugs and did comedy. So it's, it's a fascinating relationship there. But we yeah. won't talk about my drug use. Hey. Statue of Limitations. That's the other show I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they meet every Tuesday. They meet every Tuesday. <laughs> the back of the coffee shop. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Basement out. of a church. It's cool. It's a basement of a church. But um, Good coffee, though. Good coffee. It's like holy water. I don't know. Oh, really? Holy hot coffee. That's <laughs> my religious brain. Okay, so, anyway. So really where the drive comes from, I think, is just doing what I love. I feel like when you're doing what you love, you have boundless energy and motivation. And even in the hard times, the work is still worth it because at the end of the day, you wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I will be, you know, maybe up till 2 a.m. or whatever, editing or whatnot, but I would rather do that than be sitting in a cubicle somewhere. Yeah. So, it, and it's whatever makes you happy. I'm not saying a cubicle is the wrong thing. I just- Losers. Do, I do, <laughs> Am I right? Get out of that cubicle, you nerds. Unless it anyway. makes you happy. Unless yeah, it makes you happy like and walls. you find fulfillment in it. So I knew I didn't personally, just from my experience working at like Enterprise Rent a Car, which we Bro. which we shared uh, on our last episode together. God, we shared that yeah. place. But, you don't, hey, you don't have to be miserable. You don't have to work behind a cubicle to be miserable. You can, <laughs> you can rent cars. You can rent cars and still be miserable. Hey, you can be miserable anywhere. Of course. Yes. So the, my I'll work ethic just kind of comes from doing what makes me least miserable. Or I, it's a tolerable miserable. Yeah. I just love we, it. We should have a dictionary on this show. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth, possibly. <laughs> yeah. Well, doing what you love, right? And mm -hmm. um, keeping it simple. So I'll just, I'll share with you kind of my struggle in the past, and then you can tell me if this is something you uh, were able to relate to in the yeah. beginning. Uh, I was getting jaded very quickly because I wanted people to understand how funny I was, but I didn't know how to make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so I would get up there kind of grumpy, like, why, why don't you understand how funny I am? But I wasn't bringing anything 
joyous to the table. And so I built a kind of a complex. Like I made it more complex than it was, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Um, so it, what's the like simple base truth for you as to why comedy is a love? Well, first off, what you project on the audience, they're going to project back to you. So if you're grumpy or edgy or angry or bored or not invested in what you're talking about, they're not going to be invested to respond. Right. So they, they are a mirror in that sense that you're almost like evoking whatever emotion you're getting. Mm -hmm. But that also takes years of just trial and error. It's, the awareness is one step, but then actually be able to implement it in like on a show by show basis requires just time and years. Yeah. But I know the love side of comedy is just getting that, well, one, that laugh. I mean, mm. it's, you know, I've, I've never done like hard drugs, but I've heard, you know, comedy, you know, it could be, I've heard, I've interviewed comics who say it's like heroin. Like it's just, you mm. become an addict with it, that, yeah. that laugh and you feel that love. But then when you meet people after the show where a lady's like, I'm mad at you, you made me pee on myself and things <laughs> like but they're happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, that's what keeps you coming back and keeps you pressing forward and continue to get on stage night after night. Because I'm telling you, it's comedy is a grind. And 10 years in, I feel like I'm just now starting to figure out how I'm funny. Like, and I'm by no means, I don't think I found my voice. I don't think I by any means have mastered it by any means. But I feel like 10 years in, I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get at least an idea of what my sense of humor is and the kind of, kind of material I can plug into that sense of humor. Yeah. So it was just 10, it's been 10 years of just on stage every night. The early days, four months in, dude, I would be at open mics every single night. If I wasn't at open mic, I would be at a comedy club that weekend watching headliners. Yeah. I was always, always, always in a comedy room studying or performing. Where, where would you pull the joy from? Because <laughs> you know how miserable it can be. Like, yeah. But how did, how did you stay happy? Are you just are you normally just the positive, happy guy? I just knew it was what I wanted to be doing. I it, it, It's tough to explain because it's just like instinctual in a sense. I mean, I always wanted to be a comedian, mm -hmm. but it took me until senior year of college yeah. to decide to become a comedian. So it's like we all want to do something, but to actually do it, that's a whole, you know, taking that step like we were talking about earlier, yeah. that's the whole difference between wanting to and actually doing. Right. So it's it's something I always wanted to do, and the first time I did it, it just, it almost just like pulled the veil back, and I was just like, oh, this is my life now forever. And I've heard <laughs> several comedians say that as soon as they did it once, they're like, okay, so this is what I'm doing the rest of my life. Yeah. And you look for by any means necessary to continue that process. And it is by any means necessary, meaning you're at a coffee shop in front of four people or you're at a strip club on the south side at 1 a.m. on done that, Shake right? Monday. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done all of that. And it's all just part of the process. And of course, I'm... I'm not invincible. I've had highs and lows and I've been happy and sad, but it's at the end of the day, the law the it averages out to I'm doing what I love. Can you talk to, can you talk to uh, the guts of it? Because every time I, I've told anybody I'm doing stand up, they're like, oh, you must have some real balls. I'm like, well, I have some, but that's not like, do you know where the guts come from to get up every night and put kind of your dirty laundry? Have you discovered in the past 10 years, like what it is that drives that uh, will to get up even when you don't feel like it? It's it's just it's it's just like a need at this point. I think I, there really isn't. I wish I had like a magic bullet for like a comic listening who is like, oh, well, that helps me. But it really it was just like this is this needs to be done. Yeah. So even if I don't feel like it in the moment, I know I'll feel better after. Yeah. And everything I've heard, and still to this day, I mean, every comic I've interviewed, the number one piece of advice is you have to get on stage. That's the yeah. number one sector entertainer. When I heard him say it, I was like, okay, yeah. every comic I've interviewed has said you have to get on stage. And that's, you just, if you want to be a comedian, you have to be on stage. Yeah. So it really is just like pulling the trigger or jumping in the pool. It's just like, just do it. You just got to do it. And it's not easy. And if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. It's true. You know what I mean? So that's why you see, 
I've seen so many comics come and go because they may get momentum for six months and then they have a bad show and they fall off. But I've had, I never forget, I did a shows at a, a nightclub here in Atlanta called Encore. Uh, K Dub, comedian K Dub hosted him, who he's now like on, I think like TI's label. He's with Hustle Gang and all this. But like he, he I'm sorry, I'm, that's those are, that's my people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Do you listen to ATL. Mom, comfort and sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to his show every Sunday and I bombed every Sunday. But I said, kept going back. Going back. Yeah. But I kept going back. I was like, I'm going to get him this week. I'm going to get him this week. And I don't know what that is in my brain. Yeah. But it's just, it's something I know I was born to do. So it's like, why not do it? Yeah. Why not show up? Yeah. I don't, I, I've never really tried to explain it to someone before, but it really is just like, I I know I was born to do this. I wouldn't want to do anything else. So even if it is a terrible open mic, I'd rather do that yeah. than be in bed early to get up for a terrible job. Yeah. No, because, man, you're talking about if it was easy, everybody would do it. I literally went this past two months. I got a, I was working at a job, and I was like, this is safe and secure. Do I really want to do stand-up? Like, I'd much rather be in bed watching Netflix, eating ice cream at 9 o'clock at night. Yes. Isn't that the goal of life? You know what I mean? And it took it took um, basically becoming miserable in that, in that safety and security. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Are you insane? Like, don't you want to make people laugh? Don't you want to bring joy to the world? Like, what are you doing laying here? Just get out there, you stupid piece of crap. Mm -hmm. and I had to be mean to myself because it was like I had to, it was like I was under a spell of safety and security and comfort that I just fell into immediately. You know, it's easy to do. Yeah. Was there ever a point where you fell into that kind of security? Like, I mean, obviously, we talked about working at Enterprise, but was mm -hmm. there ever the thought of, well, I can make this amount of money and I'll have some security in my life and I don't have to, or was it always just, I'm doing. Yeah, it was from from the beginning. My whole goal was to just save up enough money to be able to come full time yeah. in comedy. So part of that is working at Enterprise from seven till six, then being out at shows that night till midnight or one, and then getting up and just doing that every day of the week. You yeah. know, but it's it was just all a process. I took Incredible. lesser and lesser paying jobs. But, you know, living at home at first, then I moved into like the hood of Atlanta, living in a studio apartment in the basement of this building. Yeah. And then moved in with like a roommate who was horrendous. But it, it was all for the sake of just getting to full time comedy. Yeah. And it's all led to this point where. For sure. The trophy husband special. Dude, every. All of those open mics, all of those road trips, driving 12 hours for $50. Like all the bombs, everything I've done for the past 10 years is really culminating into this special that yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at this special, like I'm an artist that's really trying to do something I've never seen done before. Yeah. It's kind of like with the podcast, I started my podcast because there wasn't a podcast out there like it. I was like, I want to create a show that I want to listen to. So I yeah. started my podcast for interview comedians and the same thing with this special. It's like. I've done hours and hours and hours of research into how people release albums independently, how they're doing their specials. I haven't really, and I've connected with great comics and that I'm friends with now. Yeah. And we, we go back and forth on like, okay, I saw this article. Have you seen this? And we're like sharing ideas, but no one's really figured it out yet. Yeah. Like the formula too, like, how do you independently produce your own special? Then how do you independently release it and it be a success? Yeah. And my success is really just breaking even on it. If I can make my money back, I, I find that to be the success. Anything else is just gravy. But right. I'm really attempting to do something no one else is. I haven't seen anyone else do it. Right. And if they have, please lead me in their direction and I would love to learn from them. But to this point, it's kind of like creating, like with the podcast, creating what I want to see, the special, creating something I want to see so comics can then follow in that kind of blueprint yeah. this is how it happened and it's so much about finding the artist's voice too like with writing with painting with anything oh bob ross hey what's up man hey. um <laughs> oh hot breath yeah hot breath too hey <laughs> um it's also it's uh finding the finding your voice organically through not not worrying about what's going on outside of you what other people are doing 
uh, what other people are saying, how they're looking at you, but understanding that this is how joy flows through me. This is how laughter flows through me. Mm -hmm. This is how success feels to me. And then allowing that to kind of explode out in a unicorn rainbow onto the world, right? Yeah. But that's like, that takes years of cultivating your own identity. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's such a process and each one of us has a different, different path we're on. Right. And it took me, I'm telling you, it probably took me about eight years into comedy to even start to kind of shift that mindset of like, why not me? How did they, they're not funny. What, ha what? Like it took me almost like eight years in to really start to shift my mindset to be like, eyes on your own paper, focus on what you can control. Dude, it's difficult. I got goosebumps when you say that because holy crap, that is that not the hardest thing? It's very difficult. Especially like if you're at a mic and these people are killing in front of you. Like for me, at least I've seen other people and they're killing in front of me. And I'm like, I don't know. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, but it's again, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I have to do whatever the hell I'm doing. And that's, that's a big note for comics as well is that if someone goes up before you and just kills, it's helpful to your set to be happy for them yeah. and to just go up with your yeah. energy. Don't try to match their energy. If they're up here at eight, but your normal energy is at five and that's how you perform, don't bring it up to eight to try to match. Bring the audience down to you. They will follow you. Yeah. They're, the audience, they've turned the page. Like if someone kills, they're like, oh, cool. All right. Next page. Right. So the room is reset with you. So bring them to you. I like that uh, imagery. Like they're turning the page. Yeah. What's on the next page. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. But, but it's all time, man. Yeah. It's And it's, I'm telling you, I have friends who have like been on Conan within four years of doing stand up, And I have friends 25 years in who are some of the funniest people I've ever met. And like the majority of the world hasn't heard of them. Well, so it's thank it. you for saying that. I, <laughs> I think so too, but I think the world will know more about me soon. <laughs> but there's, there's, so it's like, there's no right way. There's only your way at the yeah. end of the day. But, and bringing joy to yourself too, because mm -hmm. I think for me, like this past month that I've gotten back to it, I've found an inner joy to doing it as opposed to whatever everybody else is feeling or doing like, even yeah. though I've had some sets where obviously I've done well, but um, like they haven't laughed like crazy. But by the end of it, I had so much fun that it felt like I killed. Yes. I, I was full by then. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it's it's feeding, all about the having fun. You're feeding on people's souls. <laughs> <laughs> feeding on, I don't know what material. I haven't seen your material in a while. I need to it's check it out here. It's all about demonic possession. <laughs> But it is, it adds up to a big difference. So if you're having fun four months in, yeah. it's very easy for us to like get in our own head and be like, but this is important and I have something to say, but it's all incremental. I would have sets, dude, where all I would focus on was just breathing. Hmm. Like there were, and this, these are like open mics with mainly comics that's at a bar and I would just go up and I was like, okay, I found it helpful to like set a goal for each set. Okay. So I may have written 10 new jokes, but it's like, if I do this one joke out of five minutes, if I just get that one joke out somewhere, the whole set's is victory. Whether the joke bombs mm -hmm. or lands, if I get that joke out, then it's success. I love that. So I had moments where I got advice from a comic saying young comics always forget to breathe up there. Yeah. So I had sets where I literally, my only goal was to focus on breathing. I would mm -hmm. like say a joke and audibly inhale and exhale. Hot breath. Audibly. Yeah. Hot breath. Hot breath. Yes. Hot breath podcast Hot breath. on YouTube. Make sure you get that in the Spotify. Frame. Oh, that one it's too. It's a great, great podcast. But this is the birth, almost like the birth of hot breath. <clears throat> what you're talking about now. Breathing? Breathing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I right, people? Come on. What are we talking about? Huh? Breathe. <laughs> So that was my, that was how I would approach some sets is it's just very incremental, like incremental victories that'll make the big difference down the road. Just one set at a time. I love that because, um, as an alcoholic recovering, thank you very much. Congratulations. Out there. Yeah. Whatever. Um, <laughs> big deal. no, it is in being in recovery. Our goal at the end of each day, no matter how terrible or good it is, is did I drink today? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And allowing that to be the victory, 
because it has to come from a place of humility too. I find that like going there and, and allowing yourself to be like just this, I'm not the greatest of all time. I'm not the worst of all time, but like allowing yourself to just be there, you mm-hmm. know, and be present for it. Like you said, just breathe and work on one aspect of something. And as long as that's taken care of, that one aspect is just not drinking today or, or telling this one joke, it's a victory. Mm-hmm. So you're not, so I'm not constantly beating myself up that this wasn't done. I didn't do that because I can go into morbid reflection extremely quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It can go either way. Right. You know, you can find a lot of positive momentum or a lot of negative momentum. So yeah. Focusing on those small victories. Oh, I woke up and brushed my teeth instead of eating a pint of ice cream. Yeah. Good for me. Yeah. And <laughs> Just little Which victories like that. Brushing your teeth with Ben and Jerry. <laughs> yeah. You got me thinking about ice cream now. It's good stuff. Um, I quit. I quit ice cream too. Really? Yeah. Congrats, man. Thanks. <laughs> I think we talked we talk about this last show. We Don't like, I look I thinner? Everything. You look great. You go. <laughs> Gorgeous. Hey, look at me, huh? You quit ice cream. I quit it. How did? And you- I can I tell you the energy level I have is so much better. It's like I'm not in the ups and downs aren't as bad because I'm not just like having a diabetic. Dude, kind of sugar fit. is legitimate poison. It's yeah. It's, it's actual. It's actual poison. Yeah. It's just like uh, like alcohol is poison. It's poison with a narcotic effect. Right. Like it's. Sugar is actual poison. Yeah, I was getting high on But it's in everything. Man. Oh, I, I do. I, yeah. I mean, I. you know what? I've learned through, through like me dealing with that and just understanding everybody is addicted to sugar at sure. some level. Because you know, we're biologically like determined and triggered to. It's our survival for, mechanism. Look yeah, for it's sugar. Like yeah. something sweet. Now it's engineered. Literally, just, it's, it's when I say to people, no, I don't drink anymore. They're like, good for you. When I say. If, some, if I'm like at somewhere and they're like, you want some cake? I'm like, no, I'm, I quit sugar. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you, huh? Right. They're what rejecting you? it. Yeah. I'm like, hey, take it easy. I just yeah. don't, I don't want to eat the cake. Yeah. Because then people, it leads to, I don't want the piece because then I'll have a whole one on the way home. I would eat, <laughs> bro, like, I was eating like whole tubs of ice cream every night. No wonder I didn't want to get out and do comedy. I was like. Oh, yeah. Like out of my mind. Yeah. Oh, dude. And, but you're high and then you're like, hate. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Up, oh. Yeah. And it's just the mucus, and it's just God, yeah, we're yeah. That lactose intolerance is a real. You I try not to talk find about substitute. it. People don't like me talking about that on stage. By the way, the lactose, lactose intolerance. intolerance yeah. It's a gross. Why don't you just find ways to say it? Yeah, I maybe mean, that's it. Before they're saying, just keep swinging, man. Yeah, I know. that's all. I'm, I'm the dude. Yeah, just keep swinging. Well, you're talking about breathing on stage. Yeah. You're also talking about um, the ups and downs and keeping kind of consistent. You've run a marathon or half marathon recently? I ran a marathon. You ran a marathon. Yeah, last year. What did you feel about running, going through the process of running that marathon and how it related to like your journey in comedy? Were it, you like on the like thinking about it while you were running? I can't imagine you would be. Oh, dude. It, it was uh, – and I've already um, – committed myself to doing it again this year because um my father-in-law told me his time so now i have to beat his time he beat how old is he uh but he he, it was when he was he was wearing rollerblades there was a guy at the marathon on rollerblades i just want to like trip him i'm like yo dude dude and there was a guy barefoot too he's like called himself barefoot elvis it was gnarly but um (laughs) he um he he had told me he when he was my age he ran a marathon too and his his time was like three hours and thirty minutes and I was just like I guess I gotta beat that now three hours and thirty minutes and twenty seven miles twenty six point two so I think that averages around like nine or nine fifteen a mile that's tough bro that's oh yeah like, but it's I ran this one in four oh nine wow and that was all really without mindfully or strategically training by the way this episode is sponsored by cleanup 409 you can get it in any grocery store i'll uh, add this in post-production okay yeah <laughs> cgi, no, CGI. it's just gonna be him it's what made you use 409 as this that was your time oh i get it giddy up 409 giddy up for oh it's weed killer isn't it 409 what is it? Man? No, it's this cleaner. Clean it. Because they would say, giddy up 409. See? I think that was their TV hey. commercial. Their jingle. <laughs> but I know it, what I'm doing. <laughs> it really has opened my mind to like what else is possible. Because yeah. with, the, with the marathon, it was like, I'm setting this goal. 
I have no idea how I'm going to achieve it. I really don't even know where to start. Yeah. I'm not prepared. Uh, so let's see what happens. Yeah. And it, it all just really started from, let me, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone because I was starting to get into a rut creatively and mm-hmm. just in life in general of getting in kind of this rep, repetitious kind of momentum. And I was like, well, what'll shake it up? I was like, what if I ran a marathon this year? Yeah. I, last year was the first year I set actual goals like measurable specific goals Mm -hmm. and i'll never not do that again it changed it's changed my life actually starting the year and being like what do i want to achieve using smart goals yeah for sure so running a marathon was one of those recording an album was one of those but then it evolved into the comedy special but the marathon was that scary goal of like i don't even know where to begin but we're gonna do it and then actually achieving and finishing the goal it it's really opened my mind to like what else is possible and how much have I been holding myself back in everything I do. Yeah. Cause when you see it in that way and I joke with you, like, I don't know, it was like six months ago. I was like, I finally figured out how goals work. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I remember that. After being a personal trainer, doing all this stuff, yeah. and helping people with goals for, you know, 15 years. I was like, I, I get it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally like you take the big thing mm-hmm. and then you slice it up and then you do one of those things each day week month year whatever it is brick by brick brick by brick man yeah. and it, it becomes a doable achievement mm-hmm. which makes it so less scary and it's like it's just like you get up on stage and do this one thing so if i can just get up today and go to a mic if i can just you know uh, write three jokes today mm-hmm. if i can just read about comedy read some a couple pages about it or whatever it is um then I've accomplished something towards my goal. Yeah, and that's 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 how I've been able to maintain like any sort of like writing ritual or habit is I set the bar super low on writing. I'm like, if I woke up and wrote the date on paper, yeah, I I consider that a success just because most of the time it leads to more. It may lead to a page. Sometimes it leads to an hour. Sometimes I write the date and that's it. But it's just like you said, just brick by brick. I showed up today and I wrote something down. Yeah. And I, I count all of that. Comedians a lot of time want to overthink, oh, I want to write more. I, we all know and think we should be writing more. But the lower you set that bar, I feel like the higher you're going to get. Yeah. Just because you one day you may write one line, the next day it may be like one entire new bit. Yeah, and as a writer, knowing that the hardest part is literally just sitting down in front of the computer and mm-hmm. starting to type because yeah. because there are those goals. Like if you sit down and say, I'm going to write a book, and you, it's, you're going to avoid that computer because it's like, I don't want to write a book. Mm-hmm. What the hell am I thinking? All day long, all these different doubts. But you say, I'm just going to sit down and write three words. It doesn't matter what words they are. They can be any words in the world. Mm-hmm. And then whatever reason, those three words – or whatever it is, do something to your brain and it like connects and creates a web of ideas that somehow can create a whole book, which may sound crazy, but that's literally how it's worked for me a couple of times. That's so cool. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Like if we just, I think it's a, and I'm kind of a spiritual guy. I, uh, you know, talk about a lot of my other podcasts upon awakening, but if we just, the whole seeking, right? Like seeking you will find. It's not about the the finish line. It's about the journey. Mm-hmm. Like, and as long as you're willing to take steps on the journey, you're gonna find all the things that you've ever needed. And they're all there. They've mm-hmm. always been there. It's like we just start coming to awareness of it. You know, like the jokes are always there. Our materials right in front of us. It's literally like we're um, archaeologists, like uncovering dinosaur bones, man. Like oh, they've been there forever. Mm-hmm. You know, all we're doing is brushing away the dirt and just allowing yourself to see them as well. I think yeah. Noah, Noah Garden Schwartz, who I've had on the podcast twice now, he really broke down writing in a very simple way to me that it was just like, it's not necessarily always looking for jokes. A lot of times comedians like, well, I gotta, okay, there's gotta be material here in the grocery store. There's gotta <laughs> go to the grocery store to get <laughs> a new What's up with bit. broccoli? Am I right? It's right. like green? And, and ah. like, we almost like try to, we try to suffocate the material into existence, but we end up killing yeah. it. But his mindset is just, just be open. Don't be looking for material, but just be open to receiving it if it comes into your line of sight. But yeah. don't like try to like force the material. 
really just be open in that awareness, like you said. Just have the awareness. Be open to something silly. Yeah. Tripping over a T-Rex tail, perhaps. Mm, a T-Rex tail. Which is tail. the, going just as a callback, I probably, I don't know, is it for archaeology? Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Can I have that? Can I have that joke? Is that uh, come joke? on, I think it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> we could share it. Split custody, huh? <laughs> Split custody! <laughs> you get it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll take Tuesday, Thursday. I'll take, I'll take every other weekend. Every other weekend, like I do with my kids. Hey, come on. Hey, now, hey. <laughs> What's up? Dead beat that. I'm doing my best. Hey, leave me alone. All right, I'm insecure about it. Hey, what's up? Still doing a show here, Matt. This is gonna be great, Matt. This isn't. Uh... You're a trophy husband. <laughs> I'm gonna put an X here. It's just trophy ex husband or participation trophy participation husband. Trophy husband. <laughs> so let's talk about the special man. Oh, let's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I lead the Just group? working on breathing here. <laughs> <laughs> breathing is important. Oh, oh yeah, I did want to talk about breathing because you were talking about uh-huh. doing it on stage, but um, you've also started meditating recently. Oh, and man, can dude. I tell you how meditation has changed my life? Yes. I want you to tell me how it's changed yours. Do you want to go first or do you want me to? Well, it's changed my life completely. So, Joel, if you'll tell me more about it, if you'll go into detail, it's absolutely oh. revolutionized. Oh, dude. Everything. I, I I started kind of I I've tinkered I've tinkered around with it a few times over the years. Yeah. And then I heard uh are you familiar with Ray Dalio? Mm-hmm. He's a billionaire hedge fund guy, but he attributed uh, meditation <coughs> to the the most important factor in his life that's led to his success is meditation. Mm. And Tim Ferriss has a book that are you familiar with Tim Ferriss? Yeah. So he One minute work week. No. Yeah. For Hour work, four minute work week. I think hey, that sounds four like a, hour. Yeah, he has all sorts. Four of hour work week. But he has. I, I like. I like learning from things outside of comedy, you know, yeah. and then just seeing how I can apply them into comedy. Oh yeah. But he's interviewed everyone under the sun that's mm-hmm. like successful, and then like the number one thing they all had in common was like this morning mindful ritual. Mm-hmm. They yeah. all had some sort of quiet time or meditation. So the miracle morning is that that guy? Mm-hmm. Is yeah, that part yeah. Of it? Part, yeah. yeah, that's all part of it too. Okay. So as soon it, it then hearing Ray Dalio say that really solidified in my brain. Okay, I should take this seriously. And ever yeah. since, it's just like we said, the positive momentum where you can find the negative momentum. Just starting your day on a positive foot, yeah. I feel like propels you into kind of like the morning being the rudder of your day. It kind of steers you in a more productive path. Yeah, and it's just I just feel different. I feel more aware and mindful. It's not. Some people over um, overcomplicate meditation and think it's going to be like the magic pill. Yeah, it's like, oh, I won't have to, if I meditate, magic happens. It's like, no, I mean, you still have to put in the work. You still yeah. have to get organized. You still have to yeah. try, but it just makes trying a little bit easier and it makes you more open and perceptive and just grateful. Well, you talk talking about awareness too. For me, honestly, meditation obliterated my depression and, and anxiety. Mm. Like I hear so many people talk about anxiety. Um, and I, I feel like we have a natural kind of BS meter in the, built inside of us or a ego ticker. It's my mm-hmm. heart. Like, have you ever had those times where you feel like your heart's beating out of your chest and you can't, like, you want to say something or, but you're not sure? Mm-hmm. Man, that's my ego saying you're a little bit, or my ego being a little bit too big at that moment or me not being humble enough. It's telling me that, hey, something's off. You can speak, but don't expect to change the world. Just like you're no, just a normal human being. And whatever you're going to say is going to be fine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always come in times of having to speak. But learning to meditate and focus on my breath, like it taught me how to breathe, man. I didn't know how to breathe. Mm-hmm. As simple as that is, like how do you, people don't know how to breathe anymore. You know, we get so lost in what we're doing in our day, day-to-day work. It's like, have I actually sat and focused on the air around me that's coming in my lungs and through my body and creating this life? It's like literally creating life. And I haven't paid a bit of attention to it, you know? And for me, that was like, it's a huge awakening. And you talk about work. It is work. Try focusing on breath or like if you have pain in your arm or your leg or whatever, like focus on that and be present with it in those moments mm-hmm. and how long you can focus on it. And everything else around you gets better. Like your senses become heightened, your actual focus in real life becomes better. Yes. Because you know how to be present with things. Mm-hmm. You know? And everything just kind of slows down in a very fun way. Yeah, I love it. It took me very recently to actually make it a habit, but I've done it 
every morning since since I started um, a few months ago now. Yeah. Are you doing? Because like you said, people can make it pretty complex, and I know. Every time I told people I was meditating, they were like, I don't, I don't know if I can do that. I was like, well, you don't have to like find a tree or a mountain to sit on top of. Just like sit down and yeah, and breathe. What are, do you focus on like visualization? You focus on breath meditation? Yeah, I focus on like breathing, but then also f- being like physically aware of like how I'm, I've, I've um, used headspace yeah, as well. So definitely. that's helped in kind of guiding me in like staying not necessarily focused because you don't want to like you don't want to like focus per se but using headspace kind of helped give me the rails to ride on in terms of like if i'm starting to drift okay bring it back to like the rising and lowering of my chest or my physical feet on the floor yeah but i don't overthink it to where i'm like okay i need all my chakras in a line and because then i start to force everything right so i'm in a comfortable place i focus on the breathing and just the physical and I haven't really um, played around with the visualization. I've heard it's very, um, powerful. very powerful, but I haven't. I done did some. I did some yesterday, and I'm, I'll tell you after what happened. But it like literally, what I visualized poured into my life as soon as I woke up from the meditation. Whoa! Um, but the the uh, and yeah, the whole idea that I have to stay like rigidly focused on this thing, ideas and thoughts and like fears, especially for me, fear. So many fears came into my. Mm. my awareness when I was meditating in the beginning, um, that it would pull me away from my breath. And the practice really is just, I know those things are out there. I know there's a lot of fears, a lot of anxieties, a lot of exciting things going on. Mm -hmm. Come back to breath. Come back to here. You know, we're right here. Everything's fine. Settle into your body. And it really is that practice of life is going to throw things at you. People are going to come in and out. Things are going to be going crazy. Can I be the peace? Can I be the center of the calm of the storm basically and i come back to that yeah and i think it's important like you're saying all the distractions is to do it before you do anything else so don't look at your phone yeah like literally like maybe get up use the bathroom brush your teeth like it's like the first thing yeah i don't i don't look at i usually don't look at my phone until maybe like an hour after i wake up now because as soon as you do then it just yeah, I've the world looked storm. at my phone and then tried to meditate, and I'm just like, yeah. so it's it makes a difference. Even if you're not meditating, first off, maybe just don't look at your phone immediately. Go to the yeah. bathroom and then look at your phone. Yeah, like go stare at a tree. Do outside. something before you look at your phone because it really has a negative impact on your day if you just wake up and just start reacting. Dude, I don't, I never even downloaded Yahoo News, but it's like somehow on my phone and I can't un- uninstall it. It just mm. sends these insane. Like, it's a window into the devastating world that we live in. And I understand it's crazy out there, but, like, I don't need it. To, it doesn't have to be crazy in here, you know? And I yeah. think that's so much about getting up on stage, too. Mm-hmm. Like, without um, not bringing some kind of outside thing to the stage. Like, if you just broke up with somebody that day, you bring that sadness on the stage. Obviously, you can use it for material, but, like, still bringing that joy that's within you. You know, not allow- allowing it to con- completely turn your waters into raging rivers yeah i just try to focus on what i can control at the end of the day like i've been looking into like stoicism some which i from my understanding the whole premise of it is just focus on what you can control yeah and it's that's been helpful in just releasing a lot of unnecessary anxiety around what if or how come it's more just like what is you know Ooh. Yeah, that's the that's that's the that's a t shirt. <laughs> that's that's the program too. It's a our, uh-huh. the serenity prayer is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm-hmm. And like, if I'm not responsible for my life, who who do I think it is? And that was such an important thing for me because I was a very I was a great victim. Like I loved being a victim for a long time when I was drinking. Now understanding that there's nobody else responsible for this show that's happening right now, Mm -hmm. but me. And that can be scary at first and it can be overwhelming at first, but like getting intentional about it, start setting smart goals for yourself, like doing these little things, it becomes so empowering to know that if I want more love in my life, I just need to be more loving to somebody else. If I want friendship, how about I be a friend to somebody? Mm -hmm. If I want laughter, I can tell a joke. I can bring joy to someone. All of that's my responsibility, you know, and what peace that brings is like, oh, I can have the life I want to have as long as I'm willing to bring it. And it's more like the more you give, the more you get, Bro. which is it seems like inverse where it's like, well, I got to 
you've got to figure out a way to smuggle in as much <laughs> as possible. But it's really the more you give. Yeah. And that's what kind of – it opened my – this year in my career was my first year where I was – like I, I just want to give as much as possible. And mm-hmm. that's why the mission of the special became – I just – my goal is this is not some get-rich-quick scheme where I don't want some – some agent to see this and want to put me on a TV show. It really is like, just like the podcast showed me, oh, people are enjoying the podcast because of the educational component and they can learn all these lessons to then make their comedy better. Yeah. Same thing with the specials. Like, well, I want to, let me do a special to show and inspire other comics that they too can do a special. Yeah. And I'm hoping that it, it, like I love my audience of comedians, but I'm hoping me being an artist really investing in myself in a good comedian i guess that That's, 10 years in you're a good comedian there's a product that like people it's yeah. a, it's a special they would want to watch right more than once yeah you've yeah. been working on your hardware for yeah. 10 years but and i'm hoping got an etsy page other artists that like listen to this you know i mean yeah. whatever investing in yourself means i'm hoping you may not have a comedy special but if it is you're an accountant but you want your start your jewelry business i'm yeah. really hoping seeing the special inspires people from all walks of life to then start to tap into that inner voice of yeah. what their passion really is. Well, it's, it's cool too, because we do look at things in kind of a black or white, uh, a very structured, like what's been done before I have to do it that way. And we just, I get, I used to get so locked down and like, what well, I, I know how to do things this way. And that's really the only way I know how to do it. But what if I break away from that and go the opposite direction? What does that look like? And so many people, it's the unconventional path. And so many people don't do it because people haven't walked the path, you know? And the unknown is the scariest truth there is. Yeah. And so you, by walking the unknown, the unconventional path, are kind of like trailblazing in a way, you know? Which is really, don't get, are you okay? Yeah, I'm listening. He was, I thought he was freaking out. <laughs> I'm going to start crying. Again. Having a panic attack. <laughs> I'm doing what? <laughs> what happened? Well, you put it that way. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going call Enterprise. Yeah. Can I get a job? <laughs> get it's trailblazing, man. You know? <sighs> it's a cool thing. Because when we see the conventional path, it's so hard to see anything else. It's just like there is nothing else. There's literally I can't see another way out because I'm so attached to all these other ways. So it's like having to cut the threads from every way you've ever known mm-hmm. and saying, I'm just going to float off and see what happens. I have faith, right? I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to go this way. I know you guys think it's crazy, but I'm just going to go do it or it's unconventional or whatever. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I believe that there's another way because there has to be another way. Yeah. You know, there and has to be. Probably the spark of that confidence came in when I first, I, uh, I was at Enterprise and they were about to, I, they just moved me to the airport, which anyone that works at Enterprise knows the airport is like the training ground of like who's going to stick it out at Enterprise type deal. But I knew, I was like, once I get to the airport, I'm probably going to end up quitting. You know, I'm, I'm going to save up enough of a nest egg to yeah. quit and take on a different job. Sure. And I really, when I got to the airport, maybe a month, maybe less, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to quit. I didn't have a job lead. I didn't, I was just, and Boulevard's the road. There's a whole rap song about it. You guys can Google it or um, check out my special. I say a joke about it on there. What? Check it out. But they, I quit that job just on, like you said, the faith that this is the right next step. And what helped with that decision is I did make a pro and con list. Mm. So I did say, where are all the pros of quitting this job? Like, what's best case scenario and what is worst case scenario? And the pros far outweighed the cons. And I was like, as soon as I did that list, it became crystal clear that that's what I need to do. Yeah. And then I found another job that got me kind of, you know, it was kind of the next yeah. lily pad to get me to the full-time comedy. Yeah. It does take a, a huge amount of faith, I feel like, to cut and mm-hmm. from conventional life and move into something unknown. Oh, yeah. But this special was unknown i mean like yeah. you know financially this is an in, this is an investment, investment for me yeah this is 10 years of comedy poured into an hour-long special so what do you want people to know about this special what is it what makes it a special a so special that doesn't make sense but well a you know lot of a lot of comedy specials there's so many now that there's 
it's like they call them a special, but none of them are really that special anymore. Yeah. So just like the podcast, I created a comedy special that I want to see. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like everything I'm doing, it is like, okay, well, this doesn't exist. Let me create it. Like, yeah. I want to create what I want to see. So it's this special is special, I feel like, because it is more. One, it's all done independently. All these specials we're seeing on Netflix and Amazon, it's all like professionally done by studios and it's all, Big budget. it's all, yeah, I'm cutting out the middleman on this and really just bootstrapping a comedy special that yeah. I documented the process. There's behind the scenes in the special. You get to see my That's dog awesome. in the special. You get to see my, my wife in the special. There's nice. like backstage. I'm, I'm releasing a vlog on my YouTube where people can see me preparing for the specials. Oh, wow. So there's a specific joke uh, me about me crying at my wedding. Yeah. And I wanted to get the story ready for the comedy special. So Isaac, the director, um, followed me around for like three weeks leading up to the wow. filming of the special, documenting me at open mics, at comedy clubs, at different venues, really preparing to get this joke ready for the special. Wow, so this is going to be this is more than just the comedy special. This is more mm -hmm. than just you up there doing doing your material. This is like a documentary of yeah, Joel Byers 10 years in the making. Yeah, and I think I think at the end of the day That's this will be like a really cool. more of a I would like to combine the vlog and special into like one cohesive documentary. Yeah. But like we said with any big goal, it's like one bite at a time. Yeah, for sure. So the vlog it will lead up to the release of the comedy special on yeah. February 1st. And I can tell you firsthand being at the special, it was freaking hilarious. <sighs> you killed me. I was like, so happy you were there. It was so good. It really was amazing. <sighs> I was so happy you were there. Dude, you're, I mean, it, I appreciate you. That, man. No matter, no matter how you feel about a person or, um, no matter like seeing, seeing somebody, uh, you look up to live, you always have this pit of like nervousness of how are they going to do mm -hmm. kind of deal. And you, you freaking killed it, man. It was, it really was just like an amazing thing to watch. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. I your think, poise on stage, mm. the way you interacted with the crowd. I mean, the way you handle your material, obviously it was, it was fantastic. It really was great. I think what also makes it special is just the story behind it. Not only this yeah. comedian, 10 years in kind of investing in himself to inspire others to do the same, but it's also, it's called the trophy husband. Yeah. I mean, in the special, I'm wearing the same suit, tie, everything, shoes I wore at my actual wedding. Oh, wow. Like, it's all, nice. it's all tied. <laughs> it's great. Like, oh, good for you. <laughs> Mine would burn on someone's lawn. <laughs> But I think the story tied into it also makes it special. Yeah. And it's also all you see in most comedy specials is the final unblemished, perfect product yeah. that they edited and sculpted together over like four recordings. Yeah. What you're seeing with mine is a raw. I mean, it's very well produced. We shot it in 4K. I mean, everything was done professionally, but. It's like we didn't have a camera set up. So I get announced to come out and then the camera's not set up. So I'm like, all right, let's go and get the camera out here and we'll just reset it. It shows the entire process. Yeah. My, the guy that hosts it, Tyler Chronicles, he's now, he's on he's like, funny he's on Wild and Out now. He's been one of the funniest people on the planet. We, we came up together in like the Atlanta open mics. He's always been one of my favorites. So the yeah. fact he was there to like host it and, you get to see a funny moment with him where there's like a, a shadow of a chain. chain yeah. And he, yeah. It's like, you got, I mean, you got to see the special to really get it, but he's just to have him. I, I want to make sure he got some FaceTime on there too, because he's, he's been a big inspiration when we talk about goals is I first started thinking about goals when I interviewed him on my podcast the first time. Yeah. And he was talking about, yeah, I make all these goals every year. And then we followed up. I did another interview with him next year because he had just got on this TV show where they moved him out to LA for like three months. And I interviewed him again when he got back and we were talking about those goals he made yeah. in the previous interview and he had achieved all of them. And then he's talking about now I'm doing these goals. And I was like, Oh, there must be something like, yeah. there must be something to this. Yeah. So he's the, the whole story of the special, I think just kind of, it, like we said, like earlier, the word you made up, serendipitously or serendipitously. 
Yeah, statistically. <laughs> statistically, serendipitously. No, it's it almost it almost brings yeah it almost brings tears to my eyes just because it is like it all just felt just kind of meant to be. Yeah. You know? Synchronistically, I think. That's, that's what it was. Synchronistically. Yeah. That's going to be merch. I'm going to get that on my website. <laughs> Synchronistastically. My life is synchronistically. That'll be the name of my next special. <laughs> Synchronistastically. It all happened here. No. On whatever my show is called. <laughs> it's going to be a big... Sh- it's going to be a lot of text on a shirt, though. <laughs> Trophy husband's a little catchier than Synchronistastically. Trophy is. I'm telling you, I've had so many people ask me about this shirt. I wear really? It. Yeah, I wear it all the time. Oh, nice. And I always make sure to direct them uh, specifically to my webpage. Um, <laughs> 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 no, I always tell them, like, <laughs> I always tell people, That's like, good. you know, it is a great material. Can we talk about where they were made? Oh, uh, this is soft. Yeah, this, this is soft. soft material. Um, honestly don't know where they were made, That's but good. I always, in all my merch, I invest in the softer shirts. They're nice. Because it's like, like, again, I don't. Where can people buy merch? JoelBuyersComedy.com. Okay, JoelBuyersComedy.com. JoelBuyersComedy.com. You can get the merch and you can get the special. And the special, no, the special is going to be out what date? Uh, February 1st. The official release date is on the 10 year anniversary, is my comedy 10 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. On February 1st, 2010, I started stand up comedy in the side room of a comedy club in front of three people. Two of them were the staff. Um, I don't know why the club's closed now, but it was more like 10 people if <laughs> yeah. I'm going to round up to, I was From so drunk, I was seeing double, yeah, that's but right. I was actually sober, actually. But, um, I said that like proudly, I was actually yeah, sober, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> actually. but, um, it, so February 1st, 2010 is when I started comedy. So I'm releasing my comedy special on my 10 year anniversary, which is February 1st, 2020. Wow. So it's, but it's, it's available for pre-sale now, which pretty, pretty much means you can just go ahead and buy it. So when it's released, you're one of the first to see it. Do they get it directly emailed to them? Um, or do you, do you'll you get, you'll be able to either stream it or you can download it. Is it going to be, do you have any version where you can have it sent to you in like a Netflix red envelope package? Like oh, they did back we'll in the day. we'll workshop that. Be, we can, we can try to DVDs. snail mail it. DVD. The, put it on laser disc. Laser disc. <laughs> Get it on laser disc. My album's gonna be on an eight track. <laughs> We're gonna etch the special into stone That's in right. a cave. Methuselah loved this. Yeah. <laughs> he said he hadn't laughed that hard in over a thousand years. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, up? we're cooking. Hey, now. what are we doing? We're cooking now. It's exciting. You got the special is going to be uh, a huge hit, I believe. I appreciate that, man. People can go on joebuyerscomedy.com and purchase the special. Mm-hmm. And do you, uh, they can also get merch. Yep. They can find your Hot Breath uh, podcast on yep. there. You can find every, everything on joelbyerscomedy.com or hotbreathpodcast.com. You really smashed everything together into one easy to find, easy to do place. That's the goal. You got to make it, you know, make it as easy as possible. I mean, we're all lazy idiots. That's for sure. I know I am. <laughs> um, you did this show. You're doing a lot. Man. Look what I did. You did. You quit ice cream. You're doing a lot. Quit man. ice cream. I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> quit ice cream. I quit my. So maybe you quit ice cream because you couldn't afford it no, anymore. My goal maybe was my right. goal was to eat less this year, so I quit my job. So I you should take care of the food. I should cut it off at the root. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it at the source. People are like, why are you so fat? I'm like, ah, I got this job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too much money. I actually solved world hunger the other day. I said if us fats would get together, instead of buying, um, not you, I'm not calling you fat, but us fats out there. It's okay, I can say that. Uh, if we would get and stop buying like diet plans and supplements and take that money and give it to hungry people, mm-hmm. they would get fatter and we would get thinner. And then that's world hunger. That's how that works. I solved it. Dude, this guy's a trailblazer out here. Hey, man. I'm learning from the best. Solving world hunger. Solving world hunger. Yeah. One joke at a time. Man, I'm excited for you to see the special. I've seen it, but I'll see it again. Seen it. <laughs> seen it cut to- Did you I see was, the trailer? Yeah, I saw the trailer. Yeah, fantastic. If, if anything, go on the website and watch the trailer. I want to put that at the beginning of this. I'm immensely proud of the the trailer. Well, I'm hoping it we, makes me want to watch. Can we it. put it at the beginning of this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Okay, cool. That's another good thing about doing it yourself. Full ownership. 
Yeah. Owning your the this isn't even my apartment. I did a <laughs> <laughs> we, we could we could do it at my wife's house and we could have done it there. That's true. You know, hashtag trophy husband. That's I gotta get back and make this is get my, fitted for an apron. This so we is got my girlfriend's apartment. <laughs> That's love, man. It's love. I love how you whispered it like she doesn't know we're here. This is my girlfriend's apartment. Oh, well, what time is it? <laughs> we should wrap this up. <laughs> Hashtag trophy Hashtag boyfriend. Hashtag trophy boyfriend. Mm-hmm. She's like, Matt, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> hey, what are you doing, Matt? <laughs> She's a weirdo. All right. But see, it's not just for husbands. The trophy husband, everyone can relate. Everyone knows a trophy husband. Everyone can. Us supportive types need. There's no entry level position for art. Mm. Unless you're an art teacher, mm. but that's not really entry level. You know, this would be the perfect get a uh, Valentine's Day gift. I was just thinking, people to watch it on. That's true. Valentine's to Day see what real love level. looks like because it does track my entire life from pretty much like where I'm from in Someville, Georgia, to meeting my wife in college, to me crying yeah. at our wedding. To you know, we didn't even talk about your wife, but man, she's pretty amazing, huh? Oh, the best. How many other... I'm biased, but... Um, adjectives would you use to explain her? Oh, it's infinite. I mean, I end the... Oh, well, I end the special on a joke she told me not to do. So that's a, it's a fun way to close out joke. my first special, is ending on a joke she said not to do. Yeah. But the very end, the sentiment is like thanking her for all her infinite wisdom and love. Yeah. It's... I wouldn't be right here without her. Without you mean question. in my girlfriend's apartment? For sure, <laughs> I would still be living on Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> on Boulevard, yeah, she rescued me. That's and I mean, you know, obviously, getting to do all the things that we love to do, trying to bring more joy to the world. There's always the people behind the scenes. Yes, and enough credit, I don't think, can be given to those people. Like for me, my mom, my girlfriend, those people who love mm-hmm. me and care about me and continue to tell me, "Keep doing it." You're not as big of an idiot as you think you are kind of deal. Like, mm. having that support is so yeah. important, man. Yeah. I'm sure your wife has been the same thing for you. For sure. And my mom, you know, early on planted that seed in my brain of, like, like you're going to do something special in the world. Like, you're, yeah. like, really planning that anything's possible yeah. and not giving you that, would that be scarcity mindset, but really instilling a growth mindset yeah. has definitely translated into my professional life. Yeah, I used to think it was uh, weird that, your ter- parents told you you could be anything you wanted to be um, until I realized that they were telling the truth. Mm-hmm. It's just really hard to do that. It's like, like you said, it's picking it, it's deciding yeah. and then walking the path by any means necessary. By any means necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're doing it, man. I appreciate it, man. Joelbyerscomedy.com. E- it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Always a pleasure to be in your presence. We're going to do some crazy things. We're going to hit the streets sometime. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, we're doing that. We're going to, people are going to know the Joel Byers name. Yes. If, and Matt Whiteside. If digitally, not in their household. Physically, I've been to jail. And I'm not afraid to go back. <laughs> <laughs> They're very nice in there. Good food. Oh, you went to jail? Arts and crafts. You drinking? Yeah. But see, people may not know, they haven't heard our first interview together. We actually went to college together and then serendipitously reconnected at Basement Theater. Which is crazy, man. Dude. It's it's all just... It's it's the it's, uni- it's the universe. It's unbelievable. It's, it God, is believable it's, at this point. Sometimes it's fun to get surprised, but then sometimes you're like, well, of course. And it's, you know? it really is, man. I'm telling you, the, the meditation, the visualizing, mm-hmm. the, the things you want in your life, and then walking the path, having the faith, and people are just like, hey, I've always been here. Hey, I've always been here. But like, it's like, oh my God, you're there. Yeah. I needed that. I needed that. And to realize that is such a... And if you're, if you're questioning whether to start comedy, start writing, start any project that you're passionate about that you want to pursue in your life... Now's the time. Like, what are we waiting for? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to tell you it's okay to do it. Just do it, and it will be okay. And start small, too. Yeah. Don't try to eat the elephant all in one bite. Right. I would say if it is, you want to start writing more. If you just Google how to start writing more, I would consider that a step. Yeah, or and starting that path. Watch all of my interviews with off over a hundred authors. Oh, yeah. On Unaware Tap Productions. Into that resource. There's, yeah. there's that, you know. Like that was for me. It was sitting down and writing a word. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna do this thing, you know. Yep. For Joel, it's hammering away comedy, 
making it happen day after day, being a trailblazer, an unconventional man, somebody who believes in himself beyond all others, somebody who knows that greatness lies inside of him because he is great and his jokes are greater. For he will bring joy and laughter to the world. He will see the smiling faces of children upon the path and he will rise. The Trophy Husband, February 1st. Order your copy now, you beautiful people. The end. Interview over. Get out of my girl's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> she gets home at four. Let's roll out. She does. She does. Okay. Oh, she does? <laughs> oh, man. That was awesome. That was so fun. Yeah, that was great. Woo! Record? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?